Dobry. Cześć, witajcie. Jestem z Palomą Harrington, wiceprezydentem organizacji homestagerów w Europie. I zadam jej trzy pytania. Pierwsze pytanie będzie dotyczyło tego, w jakim wieku powinien być w ogóle homestager? Czy jest jakiś limit, jak to wygląda z perspektywy osoby doświadczonej? Drugie pytanie będzie dotyczyło tego, czy w ogóle warto należeć do takich organizacji i dlaczego? A trzecie pytanie będzie, jak to wygląda w Polsce w ich perspektywie? Czy jesteśmy na wysokim poziomie? So, hello, hello. Uh, again, uh, Paloma, I, have, I said before, to my uh, community that I uh, will ask you three questions. So first of all, uh, tell me if homestager should have age, is some limit to have, to, has, to have it? There's no age limit whatsoever. You can start as early as you want, as young as you want. You can be as old as you want or as experienced as you would like to be, seasoned as we would say. Um, We see many people that uh, start early because they already know from a very young age that that's what they want to do, whether they decide to go directly to you know, studying home staging yeah. or if they have an interior design background or an architecture background or whatever it is and then they decide to shift to staging. So those are the youngsters that end up being lucky enough to find out home staging from an early age and go like, yeah, okay, uh, I'm gonna do that. But, You've been seeing a lot of people that have decided to change careers. Yeah. Uh, myself included. I've only started with home staging when I was 33. Okay. Not super young, not that old, but <laughs> quite in the middle. Uh, but I know lots of people that have uh, found out about home staging and fell in love with the activity after yeah. their 50s or even after their 60s. Or, uh, so they never is too late? It's never too late. If, you, if you're passionate about it, you can do it. The only thing I would say is always find the right education because mm -hmm. you want to make sure that if you waited that long to find out yeah. what you want to do, make sure you invest in your education to make the most of it, to serve the best way possible your clients, your, your, your community, your audience, uh, and make sure that you know all the techniques and everything that's involved yeah. in, within being a home stager or running a home staging business. Okay, so tell us. What is the profit? It, it, it's worth to be part of the association like Absolutely. that? So uh, we do have the European Association, which welcomes members from all across Europe, obviously. And we are part of an umbrella organization, which is the IHOSP International, mm -hmm. which has members all around the world. The benefit, from my opinion, that the best one, the best one <laughs> is being part of this community. Yeah. You are here today because we're all together within this community and exchanging information and benefiting from this exchange that will only happen because of the association. But apart from that, there are obviously other benefits such as the events organization, the events that we do online or regionally, uh, the access to resources mm -hmm. as well, because we do have so much support material for stages such as contract templates, uh, quote templates, uh, so many support you need. Okay, so the third question is, what do you think about home staging in Poland? Because you have point of view in the or uh, all the world yeah so it's good quality good level it's uh, on the beginning what do you think i think it's just surprising and so amazing what you guys are doing in poland because uh home stage has been growing so fast we call it one of the emerging markets but emerging in the sense that say three years ago it was very different a lot less stages than it is nowadays yeah. uh, and the work is just beautiful And it's interesting to ask from you know different points of view from the whole of Europe because uh, we see, for example, uh, the UK does something one way, Italy does their own way, Spain does their own way, and you, you see that Polish stages do things their own way as well. Uh -huh. So we see a lot of uh, a lifestyle approach to it yeah. in the sense that uh, 
you always try and bring an element of a, an editorial photo shoot okay. to the projects. And I think that's fascinating because it's, it's very unique to Polish stages and it brings a different touch that works for your market. So markets wouldn't mm -hmm. accommodate that, yeah. but Polish market does accommodate that. And I think that's why it's important for you to know your market, know who you're staging for. It's and first step. Yeah. Exactly. And you have, to, you have to stage so it appeals to that audience, to that market. And you guys are doing exactly that. Oh. So if it works, it works, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, and the surprising question. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> she said it was going to be three questions. <laughs> Is home staging a woman? Ooh, 100%. <laughs> yeah, we have to be so creative, resourceful. Emotional, emotional. sensual. Yes, yes, sexy. Uh, <laughs> nurturing and loving it's all about love and communication and full of passion yeah, yeah. definitely a woman sorry guys <laughs> we are in lisbon so it's a nice place here thank you for Gentuja all <laughs> she is amazing <laughs> <Pa>. <laughs>